wild call of the loon captivates those of us who have spent time on northern lakes and ponds, as does the sudden appearance of an elegant black and white bird with an iridescent necklace. I come to loons from the migration and winter point of view. But, you know, there's a whole other half of their life, if you will, and even more than half because when they're sub-adult birds, the first few summers they don't come back to freshwater, they stay out on the sea as well. What I'm doing is just checking every individual for bands and their age. Some of the first juveniles that we've banded here are actually coming back as adults each winter now, making it their adult wintering area. When we capture a bird, work it up for the 30 to the 35 minutes it's in hand. We're, we're taking data down for eight or 10 different projects. So wing loading, see the toxicology, genetic samples, uh, stable radioisotope samples. That's one reason we study all these different animals, to try and get a handle on things that will affect everything things that will affect not just the loon, but you and me and our pets and our farm animals. And it may be pollution, it may be disease, it may be all kinds of things. <coughs> the point is not just to do the science, the point is to use the science to influence public policy and to educate people about environmental protection. If they can't make it here, they're not going to make it back to breed.